A healthy and reproductive population is a dream of every nation and Ethiopia is no different. One of the organizations playing a central role in provision of health services in Ethiopia is the Ethiopian Pharmaceutical Supplies Agency, IPSA. IPSA is uh, the pharmaceutical agency uh, based in uh, Addis and is in charge of procuring drugs and medical equipment. So Ethiopia is a 100 million uh, people country uh, and it's one agency with uh, procuring all the medical uh, equipment and drugs to, those, uh, to, the, to all the facilities and health posts and uh, hospital. IPSA is currently undergoing a transformation and on 17th to 19th August 2019, the board and executive management of IPSA visited Kenya to learn from their peers from the Kenya Medical Supplies Authority, KEMSA, under the South to South Knowledge Exchange. Now IPSA is in a transformation process really to, uh, as part of the health system towards uh, achieving universal health coverage, it plays really a key role in the health sector. So how can we support uh, that transformation? The first stop for the IPSA delegation was the Strathmore Business School. They were welcomed by their host, Deputy Vice-Chancellor Planning and Development, Dr. Edward Mungai. What I intend to do, uh, briefly, is to let you know who is hosting you and also see why uh, this particular kind of a visit uh, very much links with what the university is trying to do. We have a few slides here which have titled the overview and it will take about 10 minutes because I have seen a very packed uh, program. So and in Strathmore we try to respect uh, the programs of time. So thank you and welcome you all. Various CAMSA board members and senior management executives made presentations. Dr. David Kariuki represents the Ministry of Health on the CAMSA board was the first to make his presentation. A few years ago, you know, our country um, changed its system of governance and um, we moved from one national government and we now have two levels of government. And uh, the health function is one of the functions that uh, got devolved with the national government being left a lot uh, of its activities being uh, providing health policy and guidelines, uh, whereas the county governments, we have 47 of them, uh, providing more of the health service delivery. Uh, these are the mandates which uh, the ministry gets from the health policy, the constitution, uh, the health act in terms of health regulation, also manages the national facilities and providing technical assistance uh, to the counties. You can see KEMSA is one of the organizations that, uh, which is the Kenya Medical Supplies Authority. Uh, the act has since been amended, I think it's 2018 now, uh, the new act to be able to make uh, the Kenya Medical Supplies Authority respond to the current needs of uh, the country in terms of uh, healthcare products and technologies. Uh, logistics. The major issue currently in the country, if you get to meet any of our people in the health sector, is universal health coverage. To ensure that uh, uh, the 6.2 percent of Kenyans who um, fall into poverty annually, in, uh, on average, due to catastrophic health expenditures, will no longer have to uh, do that. And uh, so we want to make healthcare more affordable by providing financial protection. But uh, providing financial protection in itself does not still assure uh, that they get the services they need. Therefore, we also have to look at services, whether they are accessible, wherever they are, they must be equitable. That uh, uh, even if I was to travel, to the border close to Ethiopia today and I need some health service, I should be able to get it 
nearly the same way we have gotten it here, especially the basic essential service. So we believe that by 2022, we can have 100% access to health services, an essential package across the country, 100% access to essential medicines, where now the Kenya Medical Supplies Authority has actually been mandated by government, being the government's agent to provide all commodities, whereas cancer has previously been only dealing with the pharmaceutical products, largely maybe over 90%, now we have given them also 100% supply of medical devices and non-pharmaceutical. Ms. Penina Mukabane, represents the Council of Governors in the Kemsa Board, took through the IPSA members on the role of county governments in delivering UHC. Yeah, you realize that uh, the national government has done quite a lot to ensure proper health service delivery up to the lowest level. But it's also important to realize that uh, health service delivery is a devolved function as at now. So it is the duty of the county government to provide service delivery at the lowest level, right from the community level up to the county referral hospitals. National government takes care of uh, the national referral uh, facilities. Since uh, devolution in 2013, we have realized quite a bit of, of progress in health service delivery in that the governors and the area members of the county assembly, they know specifically what the residents want. So the Ministry of Health may come up with policies and guidelines on how this should be done, but actual implementation is done in the counties. And we are glad that for us to provide this service delivery in, at the county level, KEMSA also has come up with a way of helping these counties to be able to focus uh, accurately what they will need. And this is for the benefit of both the counties and KEMSA. So that within the counties, there is no outcry of stockouts from, of medical commodities in the facilities. And KEMSA also is able to forecast what they can be able to procure and provide at the same time. Mr. Eliud Murithi, the Director of Commercial Services at KEMSA, took the IPSA delegation through the roles of KEMSA, how KEMSA is structured and how KEMSA runs its operations. So uh, Kenya Medical Supplies Authority uh, was established in the Act of Parliament. Uh, the Act was uh, 2013. Now we have the Health Amendment Act that incorporates this particular Act with a few amendments. But nonetheless, the mandate remains the same. So our mandate is procurement, warehousing, and distribution of essential medicines and medical supplies. And uh, also we are supposed to establish a network of storage, packaging, and distribution of two county health facilities. We do last mile distribution okay, to the doorsteps of each and every facility. And then enter into partnerships with county governments and other relevant strategic partners. So we have signed the MOU, so Memorandum of Understanding with the counties, and other strategic partners, the likes of USID, Global Fund, UNICEF, Japiego, UNFPA, basically almost all um, partners who are in healthcare in Kenya. So in Kenya we do procurement, warehousing and distribution for, for USID, for Global Fund and other, and other entities. And we charge them fees for services. Um, we do have a board of directors. Uh, the board is composed currently uh, of eight members. We have an executive uh, chairperson who is appointed by the president. The principal secretary or the PS Minister of Health or representative, and then uh, we have uh, the principal secretary and Minister of Finance or representative, and then we have a representative from Council of Governors. We thought it is prudent for us to have somebody representing the Council of Governors because the county is our biggest client. Three other persons who are independent members comprising of specialty supply chain matters, pharmacy and uh, finance. And then of course our CEO is an ex-official member of, of the board. KEMSA has been assisted by development partners to do it is in terms of transformation. So at some point we have secondary staff within KEMSA trying to help the different aspects of the organization. Like for instance, we had advisors on business development, procurement, logistics, monitoring, warehousing, resource mobilization, change management, ERP and ICT issues, this is what has helped us to transform ourselves.
So I would encourage you to embrace development partners. If you really want to transform your supply chain, you have to sit down and ask yourself, what are some of the areas that we need to reform? You come up with a roadmap, or call it a, 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 a reform agenda. And that's what exactly we did. And we consistently monitored where we are and the different uh, activities that we had uh, chosen to uh, transform. So for instance, on governance, we were able to restructure the composition of the board. Uh, you see, we brought some experts in finance, supply chain, before it was basically government officials who were in the board. Okay. And then um, legal reforms, we didn't have an act or parliament. <coughs> we were established through a legal notice. And when you establish through a legal notice, the president can wake up one day and say there's no cancer. But when you have an act of parliament, it would be very difficult. The worst you can do is there's no board. You understand? So I don't know how you established. If you're not established through an act of parliament, I would encourage you to go that direction. So we transformed our procurement system through the support of World Bank. We introduced ICT tools. We didn't have a near IP system. And then, of course, we were able to kill parallel supply chain systems after the transformation of our operations. Hence, the development partners had confidence in our operations. So they were able to trust us with their money. Okay. And then, of course, we did a lot of organiz organizational restructuring and uh, aligned ourselves to the new business by coming up with a new business model to respond to the evolution of health. The IPSA delegation got a chance to ask questions and seek clarifications from the KEMSA delegation. You know, in our case, the responsibility of this procurement agency, the property administration and procurement agency that we have at the federal level is responsible for monitoring all the best procurements done by the public. So, uh, I wish to hear uh, more uh, from Kemsa's experience. What relationship uh, do you have with this big guy and uh, your responsibility as a specifically to medical and pharmaceutical supplies? So, what are the laws that govern that in the agency, if you have one? And uh, what are the specialties when it comes to Kemsa? So CAMSA in the first place is a public entity. It is a parastatal under the Ministry of Health. So in Kenya, we have the procurement laws, which are under the Public Procurement and the Disposal Act. So all our procurement are purely under the Public Procurement and Disposal Act. That is what we follow to the latter. However, during presentation, you were shown some development partners we are working with, like World Bank in particular. Whenever we are doing procurement for them, they always do insist that we must use their laws in conjunction with the Kenyan laws where applicable. So depending on who we are buying for, we can adopt to the laws of those institutions. There was a lot of meaningful interactions during the Strathmore Business School session and the IPSA delegation found it very useful. There is a lot we've learned and I hope they will also have some things to learn from our system as well. But to continue the, the growing this partnership is one thing I would like to say. Uh, and uh, the other thing I would also like to thank is also the Pamela Steele for organizing uh, this uh, great exchange visit. And I think as a, uh, also as a governing board, uh, this is really a, a great, it was, this was a great opportunity for us. The NAV Center of Kemsa's operation is its warehouse. On Monday, 19th August, the IPSA delegation had a chance to visit Kemsa warehouses in Embakasi to learn more about how Kemsa handles quality control, warehousing, logistics and distribution. They later had a question and answer session facilitated by Dr. Samuel Okanda, Head of Operations Directorate, Kemsa. Uh, who is uh, responsible to clear the items from the port? Or is it from the that is not our responsibility. So who is the responsibility? That is the responsibility of the supplier. The supplier? Yes. So you don't have any role in the clearance? No. That is not our mandate. 
So, there is a supply that arranges on how it clears its goods. We only become responsible when the goods knock our door. Okay, how many items do you manage? 760 something SKUs. Including the medical equipment? Excluding. Yeah. The medical equipment we used to have them before. But when health was devolved, we have not been having them. But now with UHC, the government is now take, telling us to take charge. For example, the equipment we have now are the ones procured by programs like USID, World Bank. Those are the ones we have. Mr. Tefsalem Adraro, who is the Deputy Director General for Outbound Logistics, found the warehouse visit very insightful and will carry some lessons as he head back to Ethiopia. We are very much happy to be part of this South to South Knowledge Exchange uh, with KEMSA. And it was a wonderful visit. And we really appreciate the way how KEMSA is operating. And uh, we acquired a lot of knowledge. We are trying to establish this quality assurance lab. And uh, I think still by having a delegation which should attach for each and every step that the quality assurance lab is performing, uh, we can or will establish uh, a best performing quality assurance lab. And uh, we are very much amazed with the overall performance of KEMSA. One of the peculiar things that EPSA delegation noted is how women have been empowered in KEMSA to handle technical jobs like operating warehouse machinery. Abigail Kipkurui has been a plant operator in Kemsa for the last three years. Kazi yangu kwa kila siku kwa hii nyumba ni generally tunafanya kama we ni plant operator tuko marambili. Kuna wenye wana load na wenye wana offload. Sana sana mimi kama natumia ritra kama hii, mostly nafanya kazi ya rewawuzi ya warehouse. Kurewawuzi mali na kuchukisha from rack. Christine McKenna is an attache at Kemsa who is understanding a big girl. Me ni attache apa Kemsa. Kitu nilivutia kufanya hii kazi. Niliona tu msichana mdogo kama mimi anaezendesha ile mashini kubwa excavator. Nikaamua nifanya tu hiyo paleta na nika concentrate na mashini zote. Nikakuwa na passion ya kufanya hii kazi. It was an intense three days of learning and networking for the IPSA delegation. As they go back home, they carry important lessons that they can and will use to fast track the transformation journey as attested by Dr. Loko Abraham, the Director General of IPSA. And I have a board constituency, the board that this memorandum, no some committee, which in the work around many salaries, many in the Dirajal Milo and the Yano. So they hit the leg about no, we got to Lamat, Amat, Mata Bukam, Bachar Gize, what implementation in Gavabatino. Hulatanya, not to look at the Mia and South, yeah, at the Gale so half tie as action. I came to Sala and I saw half the years, but I'm Sala and I'm not in Michel. I'm not in the middle of the night. I'm not in the private night. I'm not in the middle of the night. But the staff is in Kenya, which is in Ethiopia. I'm not in the middle of the night. I'm not in the middle of the night. I'm not in the middle of the night. I think the board will be able to get the staff. I'm not in the middle of the staff. I'm not in the middle of the night. I'm not in the middle of the night. I'm not in the middle of the night. I think immediately when we come, I'm the same. I'm the same. We're going to be going to 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 the same. Immediate take home nacho. Kau nombor lagi, demo yang mana resource akan bayar lo asal ada rajin. Dengan incentive as mana agak retention, career development, zak akan bayar lo tu. Lembut je immediately implement mana agak lembut lah nasib lah. The South to South Knowledge Exchange program has been a key catalyst, ensuring that UHC is achieved in Sub-Saharan Africa. I think this is part of what we call good neighbourliness in terms of East African sub-region. So there's cooperation at the higher level, but at the level we are uh, interacting with other colleagues in Ethiopia, I think this should be encouraged because we are neighbors, we are probably got the same fate, 
And I think it's good for us in terms of looking for opportunities where we can synergize on our resources and also learn from each other uh, where we can you know, uh, learn and where we can uh, exchange notes on uh, similar problems that we are facing in terms of uh, health sector. So I think this is important it's, and uh, it's something that should be encouraged across all sectors. The EPSA delegation traveled back home equipped with skills, knowledge and with the confidence to tackle the challenges ahead of them. It's only a matter of time before IPSA is fully transformed.